Welcome back for the final event of the weekend, the sprint race. Here, the top eight from yesterday's feature race are reversed to make up the grid below us. And in just a few minutes, those drivers will be hurtling down into turn one. As we await the start of another hugely anticipated Formula 2 race, I'm joined again by Davide Valsecchi. Davide, as a former GP2 champion, can we get some insight to what is running through these young drivers' heads as they sit out on the grid? Ciao, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here. There are nervy moments. There is no doubts about that. Mental strength is the key to remain calm and focusing on the upcoming race. Formula 2 is so competitive and all of these drivers know that they are going to be pushing each other all of the way. In these sports, you have to be able to control your nerves. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to the Monaco GP Sprint Race. Yes, we're back once again in the jewel in the Formula 1 crown and we're back here on the streets of Monaco. Obviously, if you missed out on the feature race yesterday, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking it out. It was an absolutely brilliant race. So yeah, one that you guys certainly do not want to miss. But ready then on the grid for the sprint race here today. 15 laps ahead of us and changeable conditions. That could make things very, very spicy towards the end of the Grand Prix. If we get a little bit of damp conditions, maybe it'll be all or nothing uh, for a few drivers there diving in to the pit lane. But there's no intermediate tyres, so let's just wait and see how things, how crazy things might potentially get in this one. But we start P8 alongside Daruvula there, just behind our main championship rival, Artem Markov, just in front of our other championship rival, uh, our teammate Robert Schwartzman as well. But we need a good clean start. There's a fair chance we'll lose a place or two on the run down towards turn one. Starts are just not my strong point here on F2 2020. But we're ready then. Five lights coming on now for the Monaco GP sprint race. And it's the lights out. And away we go. Not off to a good start there as we try to get towards the inside. We've got someone having a look up the inside. That's Armstrong over a big, big send in towards the first corner there as we drop all the way down to 10th place off the start there. Unfortunately, our teammate Schwartzman really left for nowhere to go as well. Off the start as we lock up the rears up the hill. We might be able to try and look around the outside of Armstrong. No, just back out of that one here early on in this race. But yeah, this one certainly going to be much more difficult than the feature race yesterday. A lot of cars to try and get through if we want to try and get towards the front once again. As, yeah, we're just going to enjoy the Monaco roadblock. Can we have a look around the outside of Armstrong? As everyone just wants to sit behind each other. No, we can. I mean, not the front wing as well. That is not going to help us. Not as bad as the damage we picked up last weekend at Spain. So hopefully that won't cost us too much. But the team won us on a three-stop. I think we'll stay out. Coming to the end of lap one, though. It is Samaya who still leads the way at the front of the field. The damage here really doesn't feel too bad. The team is telling us otherwise. But I'm the one in the car. And I know exactly how I feel at the moment as we head back through turn one. Once again, though, the key is just trying to avoid getting too much wheel spin in these cars. The tyres probably will go off towards the end of the stint, and especially if it does rain, we want as much grip in the rubber as we possibly can as we head down the hill in towards sector two. Yeah, now we've got to try and at least start thinking about where we can make moves on Armstrong. Once again, we're trying to look around the outside through the hairpin. This time round, we don't hit the outside wall. We've got the inside for the next corner. Get another warning for a collision with Armstrong, but we do make the move work. And we're now back up at P9 with a lot of fish tailing to add. Oh, Matsushita going a bit slow as we head down through the hairpin. Is this going to be our new place to overtake? Unfortunately, we couldn't as there were yellow flags out. Not too sure what that's all about. Have we got someone now with mechanical issues? No, it goes green, I think. I don't really know. I don't know if someone's got issues or what. What I do know is Armstrong's all over the back of us. As we head down in towards the chicane. No, Dan Dictum's out. And we get a safety car here at the Monaco Grand Prix. I don't think that's really going to change anything. But it might bring the rain a bit closer. End of lap five. Safety car will be coming back into the pit lane. So Samaya is going to lead us away. Things I did not expect to be saying in this series but just crawling in towards the final couple of corners hopefully we can get some temps in the rubber as we head out of the final turn we need to try and get past Matsushita so we can try and get some points on the board there but decent traction actually out of the final corner and yeah just under 10 laps to go then 
here from Monaco. Can we try to apply some pressure to the Japanese driver as we head out the first couple of corners? Not quite getting the traction up the hill this time around. But as we head down in towards the next couple of corners, yes, yeah, still just struggling a bit to get some heat into the rubber. But I'm sure we will get a chance. Heading out the final corner of lap 7 then. We're just sort of sat back analysing Matsushita at the moment. Working out where he's strong. Where he's struggling a bit more as we set a new fast lap of the Grand Prix. It seems, yeah, that a lot of the AI seems to be struggling through the hairpin at the moment. Which, yeah, let's be fair, isn't the easiest place to make an overtake. But we've already pulled it off once. So maybe, just maybe, we can try and pull off another move through there. Obviously, the difficult thing is... The difference in comparison to yesterday is when you're trying to go for an overtake for the lead, if you run wide, you run a bit deep, you got no other cars in front to hit. If we run deep into a corner now, trying to get around Matsushita, we wallop the back of Daruvula. As talking about Daruvula, it really struggles down through the hairpin there. You can see he loses a lot of ground to the guys in front of him. And now all three of us just nose to tail as we head down through the tunnel. We just don't have the top end speed with how high the wings are. To really go for anything, but we are strong under brakes as we lock up the rears just a little bit. We got Jack Aitken just behind us, still trying to apply some pressure as well. See if he can pick up on the scraps. Yeah, Taruvala seems to really be struggling to get the power down on the exit of the hairpin here. So if we can get close enough to Matsushita, we might be able to try and make a bit of a diving move, but laps are running out in this race as well. As you can just see, how much begin in the braking zone there, but on the counter, in which the AI gain in the acceleration zones. Just got to sit close to him and try and find any opportunity past. Obviously, at the moment, we're not going to score any points, so we may as well try and take a bit of a risk, because we've really got nothing to lose. Oh, get a bit of a run in towards the final corner. Matsushita tries to turn in, but we got the car fully alongside and suddenly out of nowhere. A move through Anthony Noakes on what felt like a lot of opposite lock. But we're now up into P8 of this Grand Prix. Can we close up to Daruvula? As we get fishtailing on the exit, that might allow Matsushita to come back at us as we head up the hill to sit in the middle of the road. Don't allow many opportunities either way. Up towards Casino Square once again. Daruvula's got a little bit of a breakaway because of it, but I'm sure we can close back up to the Indian driver. There we go, the team now saying rain in 10 to 15 minutes, so I don't think it's going to arrive before the end of this Grand Prix, unless they've got their calculations wrong, but we're just trying to take time out of Daruvula, but all that time we lost back there, Matsushita. You can see how far back Matsushita's dropped in this race. He has really, really cost us. Four laps to go here from Monaco, and the gap just about coming down towards the second. In a lap 12, three to go, and we're now all over the back of Daruvala. You can see almost pushing him through the final corner there. And now, can we try and force an error at the Indian? We were able to yesterday. Can we do the same sort of thing today? Oh, just see how much we're trying to push, how much we're trying to expect from the rear end to work, but it just doesn't want to do it. These tyres definitely starting to reach the end of their life. As we head through Casino Square. Just easy on the power. Keep it smooth. That's the key to success here. Is just trying to keep it smooth. Keep it tidy. And of course, don't make mistakes. Have a look around the outside of Darula. But no, I think he's managed to get his issues that he had through the hairpin sorted out now. In the last few laps of the Grand Prix. But yeah, we've got to see if we can force an error. Two to go. Here from Monaco, and we are still all over the back of Daruvula. We just can't seem to get close enough in the places where we really need to be, and then seem to just get stuck behind him in the places he knows he can be a little bit slower. So, yeah, we really need to try and just find anything we possibly can in the dying stages of this race. One more lap to go then here from Monaco, and you can see we're still just all over the back of Daruvula, trying to find any sort of move we can to try and get round him here. We don't want to get too desperate and end up throwing away the eighth place that we've got because who knows just how important every single point could be come the end of the season. But unfortunately for us, it looks like Markolov is just going to get a couple of points back from us after a decent result yesterday. And lines like that are really not going to help us as we try to close up to Daruvala once more. Just getting a little bit desperate now, starting to allow mistakes to creep in 
as well in towards the hairpin. Don't know why we've accidentally left it in second gear. Yeah, we're definitely starting to make far too many errors on this final lap. But luckily, the rain has not arrived in this Monaco Grand Prix. I wouldn't have fancied our chances in the slippery conditions, I'll be honest. But yeah, P8 to P8. It may look simple on paper, but yeah, this race has certainly had a fair share of action and drama nonetheless. So that's probably, I think, the best line I've had through the hairpin all day long. In towards the final corners, though, of the Monaco Grand Prix. It looks like Samaya is going to win. This is Daruba now starting to struggle again. Big lockup in towards the final chicane. Can we have a look in towards the Raskas? No, we can't. It all gets a little bit scrappy between the pair of us there. Samaya, though, comes through to win the Monaco Grand Prix sprint race. Who would have put money on that at the start of the weekend? But we come through for eighth place. It's more points on the board. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. A great win, then, for the Campos team today. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? It was all about being in the right place at the right time. If the safety car hadn't come out and bunched everybody up, I think we could have been looking at a very different result today. I can see them on their way out to the podium now. Campos have come a really long way in this sport. And what a special race this was to see them earn the top spot. And now, let's take a look at the driver's stand. It's a good result for Artem Markolov, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. And now, Davide Valsecchi, let me ask you, who is your driver of the day? Difficult call, but I say Guleme Samaya. He was committed the entire race, and it's paid off with the result. On to the teams, then. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Meanwhile, Carlin moved up the table with another strong performance this weekend. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. So there we are then, guys. The end of the Monaco Grand Prix weekend. And it is Samaya who picks up the sprint race victory there. Again, who would have thought that as we jumped into this weekend there? Sonoda splits the two Brazilians in P2 there with another second place for Carlin this weekend. MP Motorsport third place there ahead of Virtuosi. Guan Yu Zhou in fourth there. Giotto in fifth ahead of Markolov, our championship rival, does pick up an extra point over ourselves after we were able to claim fastest lap by just half a tenth over Sonoda there at the end of the day. And yeah, Daruvla finishing in seventh place there. Matsushita and Jack Aitken just missing out ahead of our teammate Schwartz there, and you can see the rest of the field as well. No major surprises. I lot did well to pick up four places in all fairness during that Grand Prix, but yeah, complete weekend to forget for poor Dan Tictum as well there. That means in terms of the Drivers World Championship, five points clear now of our teammate uh, Robert Schwartzman there, but you can see far, uh, 22 points, sorry, even clear Markolov at the top of the field there. Guan Yu Zhou, consistency has really been key for him early on, up into fourth place there ahead of Matsushita as well there. Uh, Giotto gets the jump on Eilot, Sonoda gets the jump on Armstrong, Sato, Lungarda there, and you can see Daruvla moves past Mazepin as well there ahead of Tictum. And then you've got all three Brazilians now, 15th, 16th, and 17th there, with, yeah, Samaya now best Brazilian at the moment after that race victory there. Drogovic still in 16th ahead of PK there, and you can see, yeah, still just obviously Nassani, Galel, and Delatraz yet to score there. And in terms of the team's championship, Carlin do get the jump on ART there as MP Motorsport build a little bit of safety in that battle for P4 there. Race Lab and Virtuosi as well, very, very close for P2, but Prima still at the top there. And after that race victory, that means Campos up into 10th place overall. Who would have thought a race win would still leave you 10th in the Constructors' Championship? Only in Formula 2 would that be the case there as well. But thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless. If you did enjoy, do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed. And yeah, we will be back very, very soon for round 5 where we head to Azerbaijan. You guys do not want to miss it. 
A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.